Hey everybody, this is Dale Wilshire, Dale Wilshire Rakes, and this is my husband Jeff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we are. Hey everybody, I think we're live now. I'm sorry if I just I'm repeating something, but uh, I'm Dale Wilshire, Dale Wilshire Rakes, and this is my husband Jeff Rakes, and um, we are here to tell our COVID survivor story. Uh, I'm 53. Since age seems to matter, I think it's important you know that. And Jeff is 59. We live in Erie, Colorado. It's a part of Boulder County. We just got married last year um, after living down the street from each other for three years. It was awesome. He would take, Jeff cut my grass every week. He would take his lawnmower and just push it down the street and cut my grass. It was delightful. But we moved in together in June when we got married. Um, and so now we're all here. I'm a life coach. I'm an author and a motivational speaker. And Jeff is a director at a medical clinic. And between us, we have six kids, ages 17 to 29. We have uh, four girls and two boys, and two of those girls are uh, sheltering here with us now. So I, we wanted to share our COVID survivor story um, because we weren't seeing a lot of stories like this on the news. We'd see it every now and again, but then there were all these statistics that you know, 20% of people get sick, but that means 80% don't. And we we're like, where are all the 80% stories? And then they'd say, you know, really only 1% or I heard as much as 5% of people who uh, get sick actually do die, uh, which is very, uh, that's not what anyone wants, but that's still like, where are all the other stories? Where's the 95% and the 99? And then we'd see a lot of extreme cases, really unusual cases, but it was starting to create a bit of fear and a sense of helplessness and kind of powerlessness and we wanted to do something positive to just give you one more story of people who have been through this. We didn't skate through it. Uh, so we're going to tell you a real story. Uh, we really believe in authenticity. We'll tell you some of the good and the bad and the ugly. Um, but it's a positive story and it's a hopeful one. And I hope it just gets tucked into your mind so that if you do go through this, that you will know that you can certainly come out on the other end. We don't have a, a crystal ball, uh, but we would like to provide you with um, a positive story. So I'm going to hand it over to Jeff, who can, is going to tell us how it all started. So um, my journey through this started on March 16th. And um, I remember uh, I was in the clinic and one of our uh, physicians had told me that she had um, uh, all the symptoms and needed to go home. And I'm like, well, that's, that's crazy. I mean, it, it's really happening. And, and so, you know, we, we worked through that a little bit, you know, um, as a, as a, as a clinic. And then on the 18th is when it kind of started to get a little fuzzy for me. And, 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 and it was it just felt different, but it, on the 20th of March, I remember that morning coming in and having to wear my winter coat um, and I was just, I had the chill so bad and, and they just wouldn't stop. And, uh, there was nothing I could do to stay warm. And it was just crazy because this is a really good winter coat. And, um, so I went home that day at 11 o'clock and, um, you know, told Dell you know, a little bit about what was going on. And, you know, um, this had all really started to kick into gear in the clinic where we had to, uh, figure out what we're going to do to uh, take care of our patients. And things were starting to really change where we have all of our patients that were always coming in and now we're saying, no, stay away. And it was very, very different. And, and things were very reversed with how we take care of our patients. And so um, that next week, um, I just, there was no way I could go, go to work. And that's, that's when the fevers kicked in over the weekend. And um, it was, it was, there was 13 straight days that um, uh, I had a fever over 100. And as it turned out, Dale had the same when hers kicked in. And so during that, uh, the time that we were, we were sick, um, we had a lot of similar symptoms and we had some unique symptoms. And uh, we'll share those with you because we've all heard on the news that, you know, lately it's, it's chills, it's, you know, loss of smell and taste and, and all that's true. And some of it hits us all differently, but
But the, the, the things that were um, similar for us were the, the fever, um, and they, they definitely got worse at night. I remember our chief medical officer would, um, would text me daily, how are you feeling? You know, what's going on? And, and, um, and I remember it was day eight or nine where um, I said, this is unbelievable. I, I just, I've never experienced something like this. And, and she, you know, informed me that fever comes out at night. I remember, you know, we'd watch the news and there was a story about Chris Como from CNN, CNN that was going through this. And uh, he said, yeah, the beast comes out at night. And it's true. It, it, it is a beast. And, and that's it, it's when it really kicks in, and especially now that I just want to sleep, but it's worse, you know, and so you just struggle getting through that. Chills, uh, sweating at night. Um, dehydration was a big one. And, and, and I have to tell you, I mean, we would we would drink a lot of water, get ready for going to bed. But your mouth was always dry, your, your lips dry. Um, and it was it was that. And then you had extreme exhaustion. I mean, you would get up and go to the bathroom, you know, 12 feet away. And uh, it was just like, you go back to bed and go, holy cow. You know, that was enough. Oh, that right. was our exercise well, for the day. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> like we just ran a marathon. Um, we talked about taste or smell. Headaches were brutal. Oh. Right behind uh, your your eyebrows here and in your sinuses, it was just like, oh, it was – I. I truly feel um, for those that have migraines, it's mm -hmm. just like it was none other site. So truly sorry for those of you that do suffer from migraines. Um, light cough, um, you know, we talk about for some that get this, it's uh, it could be more severe with the coughs, but um, our coughs were pretty light. Mm -hmm. um, sinus burning, um, um, it, it was it was a uh, it was an emotional time. Oh. It was mentally draining. <laughs> Uh, as well, and to a point of, um, who? Well, I'll, I'll touch on that in, in a little, little bit. But, but every time, I mean, they would do those little pieces on the news where some sweet nurse starts singing "Amazing Grace," and I would just start crying like I lost my best friend. <laughs> I mean, every single one of those, and I was a puddle. You know, if I was watching the Hallmark Channel, it would have been all over. Everything it made us cry. <laughs> we were so emotional. It did take much to be looking at. It was embarrassing. Uh, they just brought the trash. <laughs> they didn't have any energy no. to defend it. Um, but the good thing, the good thing oh, yes. that came from this, not that I would ever recommend it, uh, but it's a great weight loss virus <laughs> because I lost 13 pounds in 13 days and uh, Dale lost eight pounds. So um, that's a blessing. I'm now trying to keep it off since I, I've, I've got to that point. So it's the lightest I've been in decades. Um, but um the things that were unique the unique symptoms that that hit us um for me i have uh, an si joint that can rotate and and um and kick out and and that's what happened and that was like what day four and <laughs> and again it's like when this thing hits there's things that happen to your body that sometimes you just don't understand and i i haven't been in that kind of pain in in, in years um so my, my back muscles just tightened up and I just, <laughs> as you want to get up and go to the bathroom, your, your back is saying, oh, no, no, you're staying right here. Um, because you're laying down so much and so often you're in the fetal position, one of the things that happened to me, sad to say, that um, I had bruising between my knees, um, literally, because your knees are all together. So then you put a pillow between them like, ah, relief, right? Um one of the things that was unique too is I lost my voice for about six days, and I, I mean I could, you know, barely talk like this, but I had pretty much lost uh, my voice um, about eighty percent, and um, it slowly came back. But it was that was unique, um, and and that that's happened. I haven't heard that happen. Um, but one of the things that uh, with having a fever for thirteen days straight over hundred was just how it scrambles your brain and how um, you just, you don't, the mental fog that you have and you're just mentally just not there. Um, and it, and even after um, I went back to work, it, it took me, it took me the whole week 
to really work through things. It just things were cognitively not clicking and and just memory and just how it was processed. It was it was very difficult. And um, and that's one of the things like, oh, I guess that makes sense. You know, when you have a temperature for 13 days over 100. So um, it, it took a while. Um, so that was one of the things that uh, really uh, impacted us well. Dale, um, her unique symptoms, um, and she okayed me to share this with you, um, was uh, her digestive system was vomiting and diarrhea. Um, and then um, her upper back was, was sore. She developed a rash between her shoulder blades. Um, and that was probably a good four days yeah. or something like yeah. that. Um, and then lung tightness for her. So again, you know. And that's the only lung uh, symptom that we had. And we were very... Uh, aware that that was the danger point and it didn't happen until toward the end of the two weeks of the fevers um and my mom had sent me something by a respiratory therapist so i was trying to take a lot of deep breaths and and keep hydrated and do a lot of those things but in our case we did not really have those lung symptoms which is probably why we didn't have to go to the hospital yeah. although they kind of thought that you might need to yeah they actually asked me to but i'm like no um anyway that's uh, to be shared in a little bit. Um, so um, day eight, nine, were, I, I just, I wasn't sure. Um, it's not that I felt like I was going to die, but I just didn't know how to make it through those days because it just got so bad. It was the highest. I had temperature, the, the achiness, and, and everything was just at a peak. But what, what, what really kicked in at that point in time was the, again, the emotional, um, stress and, um, and, and just how mentally it would just, it, it would just uh, take you over and how you felt um, and how you're going to make it through. And, and, and truly it wasn't until, and I, and during that time, I was truly in denial about being sick. Um, you know, men, men, men are not yeah, good at being we're, sick. We're, 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 not good. Yeah. We're, we're babies. And I can say that. Um, and so, um, not a good patient. Um, and we want to problem solve it. But what I realized is I was in denial. I don't have it. There's no way. I just have the flu. And and at that point in time, I really didn't know if I had it. But I, you know, working in the medical field and around physicians, I'm pretty sure I had it. Um, but um, you always felt like you were taking two steps forward and three steps back. Hmm. And um, I would always say today's the day. Today's the day, and I would say this out loud to myself because it's lonely. I mean, Dale and I had, you know, separated. She was going through her sickness in in, in a different bedroom, and I was in, in our bedroom. And it's lonely, you know. It's, it's but time takes on a different kind of feeling. Like you can lay there for hours, and it kind of feels like ten minutes. So in that way, I thought, wow, maybe getting really old is not that bad, right? But it kept saying, today's the day. I'm going to turn a corner. Stay positive. And um, it, it was, you know, when Dale saw how it was affecting me uh, uh, mentally and physically, something she, she said to me was that this is a marathon. This is not going to be a sprint. This is not something. It's not your typical flu in five days and it's gone kind of a thing. And, again, I'm still in denial about that, but it, it turned out it turned out to be to be really true. Um it was interesting during during that time, you know, we talked about bruising on the inside of the knees and and all I can I can tell you is I was trying to find different positions and how I could lay because you know I couldn't stand because you're back. You're back. Yeah. And it was it was brutal. So I finally would get into this, I call it a modified down dog position. And and to where if you know what a down dog is, you know your hands are on the ground and your your feet as well. Well, I was just my head's on the bed and my knees are on the bed and I'm just trying to find a place. We were impressive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just trying to find a position where, you know, I can try and get comfortable, and it, it was hard. Um, and so, one but of it the was two weeks with fever, and I think that's part of that marathon mindset is that if you know that ahead of time, then you can kind of pace yourself. And so, if you do get this, and you happen to be in our situation, you kind of, you know, mile eight, you're you're not at, you know, the end of the road if you're doing a marathon. You're just in it. You just kind of have to ride it like a wave and be in it. And not necessarily think about today's the day. Like I'm just in it yeah. for a while. Yeah, and until you get that mindset. Um, and and I remember at that time I literally started crying. 
Mm. And it wasn't until I broke down and started crying where I let my emotions go. And, and I felt like that's when I turned a corner, but I, mm. I, I'm so stubborn and I just didn't want to admit it. But once you get to that point um, and you start and you let it go, then you, you can move forward. I remember um, our <clears throat> chief medical officer would text me daily. How are you doing? How are you feeling? What's your temperature today? And uh, she's so sweet and caring and um, so blessed to work with, with her and all the other uh, physicians and nurse practitioners and physician's assistants and DOs. It, and it, it's just amazing people. But um, she, she texted me daily. And I remember um, she said to me, um, you know, how you doing? And I, I remember texting her back. And I, I said, I told her the story about my grandfather who died of cancer at the age of 83. I went and saw him in the hospital, um, you know, towards the end. And uh, I said, Grandpa, you have got to push through this. You've got to be strong. You've got, you've got to make it through. And um, he goes, he turned to me and said, you know, this is like nothing I've ever experienced. This is different. And that's exactly what I thought when I was going through this. I thought, this is different. It is like nothing else I've ever experienced. And so, again, the mental part, the emotional part, it, it, it's part of it. So it's hard. But that took your grandfather. That right. cancer did. And that's part of while we don't know kind of what it is, but if we assume that something is going to take us or we're going to end up in the hospital, what we believe about something, you know, as a man thinketh, so he is, it can be very powerful. And so... I think having that fear behind it, uh, that was part of the breaking point yeah. for you. Um, I just want to share a few things that if you get sick that you might want to do, just some very practical things that Jeff and I have talked about because we lived on Tylenol and we haven't had Tylenol in our house in forever because, you know, mostly we take ibuprofen, which, you know, everybody was recommending against. And Jeff had to actually alternate because of his back. And here he is. He lived through it. Uh, so it, ibuprofen will not kill you, at least according to us. Uh, but making sure you've got some Tylenol on, on hand, at least a little bottle because we just both shared that. I, I had to use Benadryl at night because I think the headaches for me were caused a lot by the sinus pressure that it really was not in my nose, but it was back in the back. So when I could dry it up, then I, I could at least go to sleep without a headache because that was making it really hard. And then now we're both on Sudafed. It was the only medical advice we were given by uh, the physician who tested Jeff, um, which by the way, it was um, it was two weeks later that actually Jeff got tested at his clinic because at that point they finally had tests for their um, their staff and so we went and and got him tested and it was it was a positive. Now at the time we didn't think there was a reason to get me tested because I you know work in my office I work with clients virtually. All my speaking events got canceled so we really didn't pay much attention to that. But. Um, I would also say, if, you know, just as a side note, keep some juice on hand or whatever your favorite salt. Like I love saltines. I never eat those and I don't drink juice anymore. But because we were so dehydrated, we were drinking a lot of water, but we we started diluting juice because we needed something that felt like it was nutritious. Uh, we didn't drink coffee. None of that sounded good. Um, and so just having some of your favorite sick foods. Uh, we didn't want soup. We didn't want the classic soup, but we wanted juice. That's probably on the eight pound weight loss there. And then if you can get some extra grocery store bags or have a bunch of paper towels around, because our two daughters, the 17 and 19 year old, high school and college age, they were here. They took such good care of us, but we had to distance from them. And they lived in the basement um, where their rooms are. So it worked out. But when they would come up and get something from the kitchen, we knew that we were sharing that kitchen with them. So I could not touch anything. I had to take a paper towel to touch a cabinet um, knob or touch the, you know, the handle to turn on the water or anything. It gets kind of ridiculous. So I started putting like Safeway bags around my hands to try to move around because we couldn't find any gloves. So if you can get any gloves or paper towels, it's very helpful. Um, and then, uh, you know, then we started ordering Home Chef. You know, we may not be able to pay for the rest of the girls' college, but uh, we're getting two meals a week because we could not make anything on our own. I do want to tell you a couple things that were helpful uh, that people did for us. So if someone you know gets sick, um, 
Number one, please do not give them unsolicited advice. Do not tell them your best, you know, medical, pseudo medical solution to their problem. It's really not helpful. Uh, they may have a doctor for that. Uh, don't ghost them. I had people that I told that I was sick, never heard from them again, gone. One was actually a health professional in my life that I am now fired. Uh, don't rush them to happy. I had some people that were so scared with what I was going for, through. I spent most of my energy trying to make them feel better. That's not a good use of energy for someone who's sick. And then also don't expect people to respond to your text. There were days that I could not. And, and I received some wonderful texts and emails and people checking in, which was great, but I just could not respond back. So know that it's a little bit more of a rhetorical <laughs> text. You're not gonna get a response, but instead just show some concern. Just, I'm thinking of you. How are you? Whether, you know, don't answer that, but I'm, I'm wondering if you get a chance, um, pray for them. I could not read or pray for two weeks. I could not really think like I normally think. And so the fact that people were praying for me was um, deeply comforting because I just couldn't do it for us. Um, I offered them food. I had several people say, I'm heading to the grocery store. What do you need? But since we had the two girls um, down in the basement who were willing to do that, we didn't need it. But if you don't have that, um, you know, that's really good. I would also say just drop some food off. Like we just wanted some fresh fruit or some some juice or some saltines, just drop it off. Um, and the sweetest thing that people did for me um, that I will always have are two people, two friends of mine wrote me letters. And how many people write a letter this day, sent in the mail, just showing concern. So I thought that was so very sweet. So um, just some, some tidbits for you. And I'll hand it over to Jeff. So um, on March 30th, um, when Dale referenced that we had testing uh, for, the, for uh, employees, I got tested on March 31st. I tested positive. And once uh, you test positive, we are we turn that information over to Boulder County Public Health. And I cannot say enough uh, uh, great things about the epidemiologist for Boulder County Public Health. In fact, at um, uh, right before we started here, um, Boulder County Public Health epidemiologist called me again because I, I shared with him that I, um, that I had tested positive again. But um, I call, uh, I'm going to call her Emily, my new BFF, um, because she literally called me uh, almost every day. Uh, and it was just amazing, the, the service they gave and, and, the, and the true um, um, caring that they, they about you as, as, a, um, as a person. So it's amazing. So one of the things we learned, uh, too, was that um, the virus, for us, uh, virus attacks weaknesses and for me, um, I, I talked about uh, the mental and emotional piece of this. And um, I, I, in my lifetime, I've had a lot of concussions because I used to play football. And, and it was one of those things where whether or not that's why that happened or whether or not that was a perceived weakness, that was one of the things that really impacted me greatly was the headaches were just just brutal. Again, we talked about Dale and how it affected her her, um, my digestive her digestive system. system. My poor digestive system. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, so we said it attacks. It, I think that's the, the thing we learned is maybe our lungs are a stronger system in our body, but the ones that weren't, that's where we had symptoms. Um, but then there's all the other weaknesses around your heart and your soul. And one of mine is this sense of feeling invisible. I actually thought I kind of licked it. I thought I thought I'd healed through that, done a lot of work on it. But this whole thing brought it up again for me. So at first, when I shared with my family that Jeff had tested positive, and since I wasn't, they considered me presumptive positive, um, th they missed the part that I was positive. And so they're like, how's Jeff? And they're texting me and it was very sweet. And I'm like, hey, I'm sick too. <laughs> Just come on, y'all are my family. I, you know, And it was embarrassing, but I was like, come on, I'm feeling invisible. And then there was the part most recently where Jeff, uh, while he was going through this, he we were hearing about people donating plasma. And he kept saying, I cannot wait to be able to do that, to donate plasma so that there might be help for other people who might be able to use our antibodies. And he just has a caring heart like that. And so he had reached out to Centura and Children's, who seem to be the two places that are doing that um, here in Colorado, kind of spearheading it all. And uh, 
had set all that up with them. They needed to take a couple of tests, a blood test, um, and then another COVID test. And um, what was really interesting was that um, he tested uh, positive again, six weeks later. That's kind of the shocking thing. And so I went to my doctor and I said, can I, can I please get tested? Because I want to know, we have a daughter coming home from college. This is a different one. And, and, and still they were like, nope, we can't test you. And because they couldn't test me, they would not use my plasma. You have to have a positive uh, confirmed test to be able at this point to donate plasma. And again, I was like, come on, I can't, I swear I went through this. So one of the recommendations we have that if you are sick and you think you might wanna do something with it later or even have the option, I would recommend you get sick. Now Kaiser just told us a couple of days ago, they're only testing one person in a household. So, you know, go first and uh, and and get that test if you want to be able to do that. But I'll let Jeff tell the rest of uh, of this shocking news that after six weeks he's still positive. So and maybe I am, but who knows? I hope not. Uh, so one of the things that motivated me to just because when I was down, I was like, we have got to learn from this in some way, give back, um, so that we can create a vaccine and, and just help others in whatever way possible. And so one of the really neat things that um, I'm so proud of the people I, I work with, I'm so blessed to work with them, but one of our um, providers who had uh, ended up testing positive um, um, was the first person in the state to be part of a um, convalescent plasma study. And actually there was a, um, a story on her uh, she was the first one to donate plasma. And so that was pretty cool. I'm like, that's it. Uh, we need more of that. And so um, so I went down that path, talked children's uh, Centura. Centura was called first. I'm like, okay, let's do it. So um, last Tuesday, I went and got tested, got the results back last Saturday, and I, I was positive. So that means that now I need quarantine again. And so um, uh, got tested uh, on Monday, got the results back today. Uh, that it was negative. However, per CDC, I need to have two negative tests. And so now, since I got tested today, um, I'm hoping to get the results tomorrow or Friday at the latest and that um, I'm negative. And so I'm like, I'm good to go. So uh, that's, uh, that's my hope. But we think this is so interesting in that the way that they send people back to work uh, is based on that you've taken 10 to 14 days from the time your symptoms start, and then you're three days um, without a fever, without any Tylenol to help you, that you've gone without fever. And we've been out without fevers for a couple of weeks, uh, and so Jeff went back to work. And while they've been masking and social distancing, I mean, to know that you're still potentially infectious, I mean, that was one of the things we may not have immunity because no one can prove that, but we kind of thought we weren't, <laughs> we were probably the safest people in the room because we were the least likely to give something to someone else because we'd already had it. And, and that just may not be the case. So always being careful um, and hopefully there will be tests to get people back to work because fevers are not necessarily a sign of, um, you know, of infection or potential contagion. So, so we, uh, thank you. Thanks for being a part of this. We were kind of just starting a conversation here about, you know, one way to survive this pandemic when you get the pandemic, when it falls on your house, but, but also to thrive in the midst of it. And we have a few things in the very end that we'll share about how we've been changed by it. But, um, you know, it's, it's, this really hits you. And, and if you're thinking, I would like to continue this kind of conversation, um, then I want you to um, consider joining Jeff and I uh, next week, same time, uh, but this time it'll be on Zoom, but we're starting a six week workshop called Pandemic Prosperity. And in this workshop, we're going to talk about the secrets to staying motivated and organized because we're all distracted and structure has gone out the window. And, and we're going to share some really amazing tips on communication and especially around personality types, how people like to be communicated with and maybe how you're communicating so you can be heard, so they can be heard. And so we can keep people from getting defensive. There's some really great techniques on this because there's a lot of 
personal and professional, that's all gone into one here. We're going to talk about how to steer clear of judgment and negativity because there's a ton of judgment. I mean, people are telling on their neighbors. I'm like, why does that guy not have a mask? It's terrible. But how can we start to adopt a positive and calm uh, mindset? And then we're going to talk about pivoting because a lot of us are facing quite a bit of change. We need new plans. We might need a new business. We might need a new business plan. And so we're going to talk about how to reinvent yourself. And I usually, as a coach, work with women. But this workshop is meant for men and women, especially if you're sheltering together, uh, because it's all kind of blended now. And so Jeff and I are going to do these together. I'll do most of the teaching, but we're going to be addressing both productivity through work, and then also people issues at home and all areas of life, because again, it's all kind of become one. So uh, for the next six weeks, we invite you to come learn with us and grow with us. This is both personal growth and professional development. And we encourage you to do it with someone you love if they happen to live in your house. I mean, how fun is that? There's something positive for you to talk about now, something new and fresh besides what's on the news, some practical tools and some hopeful insights because we believe that with the right tools and the right mindset that you can come out of this pandemic actually better, that it can change your life and your relationships for the better. Now we're limiting the course to 25 families, but we're doing this with some serious stimulus pricing because there's there's just been a lot of loss lately. So um, the package for all six weeks, and these are hour long courses with lots of handouts and, and coaching is $149, lowest we've ever done it. Um, but if you register, you get a free ebook. Hey, that's five bucks right there. I mean, it's it's good. But uh, if you want to find out more, you can go to our website, yourauthenticpersonality.com. And there's an orange button right in the beginning. You can click on that. I'll also in the comment section, put a link uh, to the course if you would like to register. Uh, but we're going to start next Wednesday. They're going to be at 7 p.m. But if you know you can't do it, you can't be there at that time, but you really would like the content, they will all be downloadable. So you can still be a part of it, still learn, and everyone will get a copy uh, of the video. But um, we just really hope that you will stay healthy and hopeful, and we would like to be a part of that. So yeah, in closing, um, something that we've talked about is how this has changed our our life forever, and and say that because just in, in the rat race of life and how we've gone through life and get that done, get that done, and and just keep moving. And it's like, how about just just smelling the roses and enjoying it? I remember the first day I was driving back to work and I drove by this park. And I was like, man. That, grass is so green. It's so beautiful. You just appreciate life in a different way. I also have to say um, it, it brought me uh, closer to my son, Kirk, um, who is here and he would call me daily. Um, my, I have three siblings I'm blessed to uh, live with in, in, in the state and my mom and dad as well. And they would reach out and, and, and it was just, I don't know, for me, it just, it, it brought a a sense of closeness that uh, I'm very grateful for. And and also too, looking at your own fear and how you look at life and things that you are fearful about and, and working through those and, and changing it to a positive mindset. And so that was kind of our, our, our journey and some of the things that we, we learned and yeah, we're dangerous now, not because we're going out without masks, but because I think of, of the fact that we went through something very hard and and now we know we we can make it through and many of us can, many of us will, but that's where that positive mindset comes in. I mean, um, you know, I always say there's nothing more dangerous than a woman with nothing to fear. So uh, we are grateful for all that God has done for us during this time. And, you know, like I mentioned, it's not a, it's not a video until I cry. Uh, you know, I was really not able to pray. So I am so grateful for the people who prayed for me, but also that in a season that I'm just not capable, that God will never leave us or forsake us. And he, his presence was with us the whole time. And um, in a season of such uncertainty, we are so grateful that we can be certain that God is not surprised by any of this. And he has a plan. 
He has a plan for every single part of this and for you. So thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope that you will continue with us next week. Uh, we're going to talk about motivation. We also do have a piece on the website. You can see if you're not sure about this, but you just want to try one class, you can do that. There's a, there's a button for that. So check it out. And we hope to see you next week. Again, stay healthy and stay hopeful. Bye-bye.